you ever create a component with so much data, so many properties that it kind of becomes a wall of text and hard to parse for other people on your team or even yourself later in the future. In this video, I'm going to show you a ton of different attributes you can add to your properties to customize your inspector however you'd like. The first is going to be very familiar to people who use Unity, and that's headers. Above your properties, you can add header, and that simply shows a label as a header above each section. Very simple. You can also use the space attribute if you'd like to add a empty space in between something without adding a header. An alternative to headers are groups, but instead of applying a group like this, you instead want to add the group attribute to all variables that share it. What this will do is create a proper dropdown that you can collapse. And when selecting something else and coming back, it will retain that information even after closing sandbox. So you can keep everything nice and organized. Here's how it looks when everything's grouped. You can see now it just looks generally nicer and cleaner. Everything's much more compact. And you can see from the name tag section here, I have a variable called has name tag. Uh, and because it's just a bool, it'd be nice to associate that with the group. Um, so what you can actually do is come to your has name tag variable and set that to a toggle group. And then make sure the name of your bool matches the name of the toggle group. Now you can see the has name tag option is completely gone and the checkbox is part of the toggled group. Let's change it back to a normal group entry for right now and we'll get back to it later. Another alternative to groups is features. So simply coming in and replacing group with feature will replace each group with a tab. Now you might be wondering what this plus button does and how you could add or remove features. Well, just like toggle group, you can use feature enabled on a bool property and you'll see when that value defaults to false, the tab isn't there, but you can add it from the dropdown and remove it by right clicking. When the tab exists, that name tag value is set to true. And when it doesn't, it's set to false. So personally for this setup, I'm going to leave the name tag as a feature because I don't always want the name tag to be there since you're not always going to be using that feature. And I'm going to replace these ones with groups again. Now you'll see my general tab here has all the general information. And I can optionally add the name tag feature if I want to use the name tag feature and remove it if I don't want it. Now let's talk about some more generic attributes. For example, I want this to say ID instead of ID number, but I still want the variable to be called ID number. What you can do is simply add a title attribute. Now if I come back, you'll see it is using the title instead of that display name. You can also use the description attribute if you want to add a custom description. But this is also automatically generated for you if you use simple documentation. And in my instance, the ID value is actually going to be set in code. It's not something I want to be able to edit on the component. So I could come in here and add read only, which will mark the property as read only. You might have noticed from the start of the video that this metadata struct isn't really readable from my component. It has this button here that lets me edit more and view more information about it, but I'd love to be able to edit these values directly from the component inspector. That's where two important attributes come in. The first is key property. If you come down to your struct and add key property, you'll see that that value is now exposed in line with the edit more button still being available. Adding key property to both of your variables will show both in line. But obviously if you had more than say four or five variables, this could very easily get cramped, especially if you're rocking like this kind of size. So an alternative to key property is instead going to the property on the component and adding inline editor. What this will do is collapse all the properties in that custom struct or class in line in the editor. So now there's no more edit more button. All properties are just shown directly underneath metadata. All right, now let's say you have a value that you only want to be shown contextually. For example, I have health and shields, but I only want shields to show when your health is already at 100. If your health is anything less than 100, it probably shouldn't show shields. To do that, we can come over to our shields variable and add show if. And we can say name of health is 100. 
And now you'll see that the vitals group only has the health with no shields. And if I drag it to 100, then the shields will appear. But there's a bit of a problem. Because show if is only checking for an exact value, because that's all it can do, if I go to a higher value, like 110, the shields will go away. But we want it to show above 100. An easy way to do this is to add a middleman variable. Underneath our vitals, we can say bool can show shields health greater than or equal to 100 with a simple arrow function. Now, instead of checking if health is 100, I can check if can show shields is true. Now in our inspector, the shields are visible when we're above 100, but as soon as we go below, we lose them. And yes, there is a counterpart to show if called hide if. So now the shields will only show if we're below 100 health. But the problem with this is that it's not really intuitive to edit the float values like this, especially if we are going to cap them from 0 to 100. So let's give them a range attribute. Simply adding range and a range, 0 to 100, will turn the values into proper sliders with actual limits. You can also come back to the attribute and add a third optional parameter of step. So setting it to 1 will mean that the slider will always return whole numbers instead of in between decimal values. There's two more optional parameters here, which are whether or not it's clamped, which I'll set to true, and then whether or not the range slider even shows. So if you set that to false while clamped is true, you won't get a slider, but you won't be able to drag above or below that min and max value. Now for some fun string related attributes. We have a name input field, which is great for, you know, one liners. But if we wanted to describe ourselves, you're going to quickly run out of room in this single line. So for a multi-line text edit, you can simply add text area. Now we get a beautiful multi-line text edit where we can add new lines as we please, and we'll even scroll to accommodate for longer text. Now for our icon string property, it would really suck if we had to go to the asset browser, find our icon every time, right click, copy the relative path, and paste it in. It would get really tedious really quick. So instead what we can do is add the image asset path attribute. Now you'll see our icon property has a proper resource control widget, allowing us to select an image file and instantly populating. Back over in our name tag tab, we have two other properties here, which we could also make a lot more user friendly. The first is a font. Finding the name of the font and typing in will be quite tedious, especially if you don't know the exact system name of the font. So we can come over to our code and simply add font name. And now you'll see we get a proper drop down for all the fonts included in our project. These are all the sandbox defaults, but you can add your own by creating a fonts folder and including it in your resource files. Now for our button to toggle the name tag, sure we know the name of our inputs and we could just type jump, but maybe we're not going to type it right or some sort of human error along the way. So let's make that a drop down as well. All you have to do is add input action. And now we get a very similar looking drop down, but opening it, you'll see we get a little search and a set to none button. The final set of attributes are enum related. So I'm going to go ahead and show a little enum example. Here I have a custom enum, and this is what the drop down looks like. Currently, you can't really tell what these do at initial glance. So let's spruce these up. Going to the definition of our enum, we can add little icons here. Now these icons will show alongside your selected enum. You can also take this a step further by adding the description attribute from earlier. And while you can't see the description from here, you do see it in the dropdown. Now let's say your enum is set up in such a way that you want to use them as flags instead of a single selected enum. First, make sure you've assigned your variables as such, or the values in the enum as such. Then simply add the flags attribute to the enum itself. Now if we go to our enum selection, you'll see we can select multiple options at the same time, with our uh, option 0 not even showing anymore because that is what's selected when we have no enum selected. All right, well, that's that. Hopefully this video was uh, informative enough for you to go off and create some awesome components that are super user friendly. Uh, for not just yourself, but your whole team if you are working with multiple people. And I'll catch you in the next one.